being honest. I can't catch up on the room. It's like winning the lottery, isn't it? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, back to the uh, March 21st, 2018 uh, meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. We are coming out of executive session. Uh, and uh, item number four on the agenda is general public comments. Anyone wishing to... Uh, make a comment on any matter that is not on tonight's agenda, please approach the podium. <coughs> Three minutes. Name and address would be appreciated. Good evening. I'm David Cleary. I live at 33 Meeting House Road. I'm speaking this evening regarding the crisis that has been occurring in our school district. Council members are likely aware of these issues, but many in the community especially those not on social media and watching at home, may not be fully aware of the significant events that have been transpiring. During the last two years, sweeping changes to policies in Scarborough schools have been proposed and implemented by our current superintendent and members of the Board of Education. Despite tremendous community opposition to these changes, the citizens have been met with poor communication, lack of transparency, and inflexibility. Media coverage has been extensive across newspapers, radio, television, and online. Scarborough's brand has been damaged. Local schools, including Chevrous, are advertising in papers specifically targeting Scarborough parents to consider, to consider moving their kids out of Scarborough to schools like Chevrous that don't have these controversial policies that are detrimental to the future of our student population. Despite potential repeal of proficiency-based learning at the state level, for example, elected officials and leadership continues to push an agenda despite the risk of losing <coughs> students. There's a palpable anger and distrust that has been building for quite some time. Tremendous distress has been created in our town due to the actions and inactions of our superintendent and members of the school board. The community has responded by taking the following actions record attendance and public comment at school board meetings, a petition led by citizens that has gathered, gathered over 1,000 signatures to oppose the change in school start times, a student-led petition that has gained over 1,500 signatures in support of high school principal Creech and asking for his reinstatement, an 83 to 1 no confidence vote by high school teachers in the superintendent's ability to effectively lead. And finally, a recall initiative of three members of the school board to remove them from their positions has already gathered as of today 2,000 signatures across the community. Scarborough schools are an extremely important part of what makes Scarborough great. Our school system attracts people to live in Scarborough, helping create a stable and growing tax base and revenue for the town. 
Needless to say, with the challenges that Scarborough has faced in the past with respect to passing budgets, this level of discord is certainly problematic. We want residents to be informed so they can participate in the process of moving towards improvement, creating balance back on our school board, and replacing our superintendent. Petitions are available in front of Town Hall for the remainder of the week. A rally has been scheduled in support of the principal for Saturday between 1 and 3 p.m. in front of Town Hall. We ask that residents come to support their town so we can break the cycle and move towards a healthier, productive outcome for our students, teachers, valued administrators, and the community at large. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to address the town council on any issue not on the agenda? Good evening, my name is Mo Erickson. I live down in Pine Point, 288 Pine Point Road. Um, I, what I wanted to bring to your attention is something that I think is um, a little suspect that's going on with the Risbera Mishu big development that's going to be proposed to be happening in the near future. I think it seems strange that our former town planner, Dan Bacon, is working with these guys. It just doesn't seem very appropriate to me to have a former employee, a, a very recent former employee that knows all the nuances and all the ins and outs of, um, of all the legalities and what goes on into making a big development working for these guys. I don't think it's appropriate. Um, I just, it, it seems very suspicious to me that the town would let somebody um, that used to work for them work now for a developer in the town. That's all I wanted to say about that. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the town council on uh, matters not on the agenda tonight? Hi, Sue Foley Ferguson, 331 Black Point Road. <clears throat> I want to talk about bullying, harassment, and people in position of power and how that all plays out in the town. At one of the first comprehensive planning meetings with the new consultants before the plan of Palooza, I spoke to the elephant in the room, which was the lack of trust that it seemed like people had in some committees. <clears throat> I spoke the truth and I spoke sincerely and honestly. Afterwards, in this council chamber, I was verbally and physically threatened by someone. Some of you witnessed it. I wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. I froze. Of the people who were present, only one person, my sister, stopped what was happening. There were other people that should have. I did receive apologies later, but it never should have happened, ever. Those that pre were present should have stopped it. And no matter what an opinion someone shares, no matter what questions that they ask or comments that they make, when they do them respectfully and honestly, they should be treated by elected officials and by committee members with respect. Responses should not be condescending. They should not be accused of being liars or disingenuous. I'm making the comments right now because I was shocked at the time, but I'm not shocked because you continue to let this happen. I, I proposed a number of or I questions to you on Friday, and I got response that was disrespectful. Bullying is when you call people names in town council emails and in town council comments. And I think it's the Mr. Chairman, I wish you would help this town heal because we got a lot of issues by talking to your counselors and telling them that it's inappropriate to be bullying and harassing people via email and that any questions that any taxpayer asks is a valid question. Nobody in power should be turning on people to ask questions. <clears throat> as, as a part of the discontinuance of Avenue 7, by the way, which I voted on, Avenue 7 did not go to the shore line. I just want to tell you that. Because <clears throat> part of what I was accused of is was being hypocritical in my vote against Avenue 7. And yet, when I looked it up and I found out by people who know it's totally different than a discontinuance to the shore. So anyway, Mr. Chairman, I would appreciate if you would uh, speak with the council and, and work on your council goals as far as being respectful to people in all avenues of communication in this town. Thank you. 
Uh, anyone else would like to address the town council on items not on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll close the uh, public hearing. I will say, uh, and we, we've tried to make a point of being responsive uh, when comments are made, that uh, Dan Bacon is a person of tremendous integrity. Uh, and I would want everyone out there who's watching or listening to understand that he's not a person who would ever take advantage of a situation. And I think all of us who've known his involvement in the uh, Scarborough Downs project have thought that because of his interest in seeing the best interests of Scarborough advanced, have thought it's a real plus to actually have Dan Bacon on the side of the developer in this case. So just wanted to say that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, minutes, March 7, 2018, regular town council meeting. Accept a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, comments, corrections? None. All in favor? Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda are none. Uh, items to be signed, the treasurer's warrants, and I have signed those. Uh, uh, order 18-22 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new requests for a food handler's license, a liquor license, an innkeeper's license, and a special amusement license from Brian and Jennifer Brennerman, DBA Dunstan Tap and Table, located at 6 Stewart Drive. And I'd ask the town clerk to give us a... Uh, this is a, a new business that's coming into town. Um, everything is uh, still in, I think, a construction mode, but they wanted to make sure they had everything in place so they can open. They won't receive their permits until they get their occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. So new business, no complaints. No complaints. <laughs> uh, accept a motion. Public hearing first, Mr. Chairman. Yes, public hearing, thank you. Uh, anyone wishing to address this item, please approach the podium. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Discussion. Can't wait. Yeah, wish them well. <laughs> wish them well. Yeah. Mr. Cayeza. Likewise, uh, you know, thanks for locating the Scarborough. Looking yep. forward to a, another venue. Um, it's getting to be a crowded field in Scarborough, and that's great for everybody in town. Yeah, great. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Order 18-23, 7 p.m. public hearing in action on the new request for a massage establishment license from Ashley Vauteur, DBA Scarborough Nail and Hair Spa, located at 311 Beach Ridge Road. And I'll ask the town clerk to do this. Uh, this is a new purchase. Uh, this was formerly owned by um, Lucinda and Bob Jettis. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a contract zone, but everything complies. I believe there was an amendment made a few months back with regards to including hair, hair care there, and um, she's in compliance. All the proper paperwork's been filed. Good. Uh, public hearing. Uh, anyone wishing to address this, please post the podium. Accept the motion. So moved. A second. Uh, comment. Mr. Kaiser. I'm, I'm going to resurrect a former practice of mine and ask for samples again. Yes. <laughs> yes, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> waiting for that. Uh, other comments? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Welcome to these people. Old business, order 17-109, second reading on request for the Scarborough Town Council to order the discontinuance <clears throat> of all portions of Avenue 2 located southerly of King Street with no damages awarded to the abutting landowner and to file said order with the town clerk. Uh, I will give a brief uh, introduction uh, on Avenue 2. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> the final step in a matter that's really too plus years, two and a half years uh, in the making. Uh, 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 I was town council chair, I guess, at the time, a few years back, and went down and visited with the Pine Point folks a couple of times. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, Council Babine had his year, and now it's back. Uh, we've had much legal and lawyer time and money spent on this. It's a really complex uh, legal framework. The, uh, issues are not easy to understand, uh, but to try and simplify it, uh, the town may have an access easement. Uh, it's in doubt. Uh, uh, we've negotiated with abutters uh, to confirm uh, uh, an access easement that would be in perpetuity. That was, that was our, our goal. Uh, 
uh, we've had a, a vigorous comment and input from the public and uh, sought to have the public uh, and those particularly who were interested in Pine Point have the opportunity to participate in the discussions with the uh, uh, abutting owners, uh, Mr. Gendron and the Gables Condominium Association. Uh, their uh, participation and input was, I thought, helpful uh, and, uh, and created a better result that we have here before us tonight. Uh, I think I can speak for the town council that the goal is to protect public access. That's really what has been said by each and every member of the town council. Uh, and that's really what we've been striving for all along. And uh, that's what I believe this agreement will achieve. So with that introduction, uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to speak to this item, please approach the podium three minutes. Take the opportunity. <clears throat> Maura Erickson, um, 288 Pine Point Road. You all know how I feel about it. And I feel like um, you say that the input from the town and uh, from the people in Pine Point was helpful. I, I, I beg to differ. I think it was probably useless because you're still going to give it away. So um, I guess what I'm asking now is knowing that you're going to give this land away. Can we not do this again? Can we make sure that the next person who wants to get free land, oceanfront property, can we just decide as a town council that we're not going to do this anymore? Can you promise the town people that you're not going to do this anymore? And you say that, that you're giving away, uh, you know, that you're, you're, we're giving this land away to um, the guy, I, don't, I can't even remember his name now, excuse me, but, and it's in perpetuity, but I'll believe that when I see it, because nothing's in perpetuity. You can always change something. There's always a way, and, and I, will, I will be very surprised if this land does not become private. It's just a matter of time before they put up signs or fences and keep the public out. So um, that's what I'm asking for, is for next time. Just say no and say no right off the bat so that we don't have to do this two year baloney of a farce that probably, as I, as I always said, was made up the minute you got, your mind was made up the minute um, Mr. Jenrin came and asked you for the land. Thank you. Others wishing to comment? <coughs> Close the, oh, oh. no, please, please <laughs> take, take uh, advantage of the opportunity. My name's Don Hamill and I live on Bay Street in Pine Point and um, I did want to speak to a couple of things. Um, uh, it, it's been a long process. Um, we've talked about the two-year process on this thing, and you know I agree with that. And I participated as a member of the Pine Point Neighborhood Association in discussions with the town, and I, I agree with what's been said that the outcome, um, because of that, uh, we believe is is certainly much more positive than what we were looking at at the outset. Okay, so so for everyone involved, I think that was that was a success. Um, but there, you know, there are other things that I think that we that we need to pay attention to um, that are larger issues, and that these do tie with other issues that are being raised in the town. The gentleman who was here speaking earlier uh, addressed three of them: communications. You know, there really never seemed to be enough of that. And I know the council does a lot to try to include that, and there's a flip side of that, and that's sort of apathy on the part of, of voters. Um, but he also mentioned lack of transparency and, and inflexibility. And I have to say, I've, I've experienced all three of those things in my experience on this issue um, involving Avenue 2. Uh, a couple things I want to highlight. Um, from the outset, it was quite clear that the town really did support the interest of a single individual primarily over the public interest. That's where we began. 
and I think it's arguable that's where we're ending with this issue. Okay, but reflect on that for a minute. Supporting the interest of a single wealthy individual over the benefit of the town versus fulfilling the obligations of the comprehensive plan to preserve and where possible expand public access to to our marine resources including the beach so it's true we're, we're sa we believe we've saved the path here in this effort but that doesn't mean it's going to be saved forever late in the game late in the process there are, are issues that have come up that were not generated from the Pine Point Neighborhood Association, but have come from other interested and pretty well-informed individuals, including things about um, the conservation easement, including things about the ability to extinguish <coughs> the easement, and, and other matters like that. Um, the other thing that we experienced that was pretty painful was that we were, as a group, not included, and the public was, was not included and invited to participate. We had to retain an attorney at significant expense and effort in order to do that. We were barred from the workshop originally, and it was only after we raised money and, and hired an attorney who was invited to speak that we were allowed to speak and participate. That, that can't happen again. So the, I leave you with this thought, and I know the red light is flashing. No, Don, Maybe finish, that's a finish good metaphor. Finish your remarks. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thank you. I don't want to cut you up. I want to leave everyone with this thought. We have major issues ahead as a town, huge issues involving the environment, involving development, involving the future of our schools. And we have, you know, there's a road we can take here between going down the road of really acrimonious interest group politics, which is really where we are now, or trying to work harder at coalitions and compromise and being open and listening and really seeking to solicit public input from the entire town, not just the folks who are the loudest. You know, and I'll leave you with a quote, you know, there was one famous figure, infamous figure from history, who said he, he would never compromise. And that individual was Jefferson Davis, you know, president of the Confederate States of America. And we all know what happened to him. So I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Larry Hartwell, 9 Period and Drive. Um, I just got, I have a question. I've heard rumors, so I don't know the accuracy of it, but what I've heard was that the land that's being transferred, given away, whatever phrase we want to use there, is not going to be assessed as beachfront property. It's going to be uh, assessed at something less than its full value. I don't know if it's true or not, but if it, it is, it's a questionable decision. Thank you. Please, if, if you have a comment, if you would get in line so that we could uh, have a good, efficient process. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, Deirdre Paul, 12 Avenue 2. Um, I <clears throat> read the agreement. I was hoping that maybe the agreement was going to be read before the public comments because I tried to upload it again on my computer and it didn't come up. So. Um, I do just want to express that I do still have concerns. And as a member of the original subdivision, when I read the Paper Street Law, it did seem that as a member of the individual sub of that subdivision, which is Avenue 2, that as one of those parcel owners that I could have rights to that land that you guys are in effect giving to this one person. I would echo Mr. Hamill <laughs> in saying that it has felt all along like this guy is being favored. I don't understand why the town said no to the Avenue 4 abutters, but are saying yes to the Avenue 2 abutters. That doesn't seem to make any sense to me at all. Um, I think it was said that there was a material difference in the two, but I don't see it. Um, I will also say that a lot of my reservations are trust issues that it seems as though the threat of a lawsuit is what is actually guiding the town's hand in this matter, whereas 
I don't see it as being in the interest of many over the interest of few. And so I'll say that. Um, I'm also anxiously awaiting to see what actually happens there, as I as well am nervous about the easement in perpetuity. Um, <clears throat> I looked at the plans. They, I thought the path on the plans actually looked good. I believe that the agreement says that from the 10 feet back that the abutters cannot build onto the 20 feet next to that. Again, I was hoping to have clarification on that before I spoke. Um, I think that that's a really nice thing because if Mr. Gendron is planning on building something big there, it would be nice to have some distance from that. Um, and then, again, I just want to say that I think a lot of the nervousness and concerns expressed by people over the course of this two years is a feeling of not being listened to. Um, the fact that Mr. Hamill had to hire a lawyer for $5,000 as a taxpayer just to be at the table to me is, that's kind of crappy. So um, I hope you all vote with your consciences and um, preserve this for sure for everyone. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to make a comment on this uh, item? <clears throat> Accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, we we do try to answer questions that are, are uh, subject to potential answers. Uh, some are elaborate. Uh, the question of whether it's to be treated as a beachfront property, the assessor assesses the land uh, and uh, uh, would treat this as additional property onto the gables and onto the gendron side. Uh, it's encumbered. And so the assessor goes through the normal process, would not say, oh, that's not going to be treated as beachfront property. It is what it is. It's a frontal do. So uh, it, gets, it, get, it will get the respect that it deserves, subject to the limitations that are being imposed here of right-of-way access easement and a conservation easement. Uh, the question uh, the lady who just sat down uh, asked was about private rights, and it's our understanding that we are trying to protect the public rights, but that the private rights are private and would be resolved by those who might wish to pursue them. That's at least our understanding. So now, questions, uh, comments, and discussion. Uh, Councilor Caterina, let's start with you. We'll probably go right around. I think everyone has probably something to say. Yeah, um, I, I, I guess I'm speechless <laughs> to some degree because uh, this whole business started when I was on the council previously, which was, oh, what, two years ago? Uh, so uh, I, I, I fail to understand why people feel we weren't listening or weren't communicating or whatever. Um, it, it's disconcerting to me that when people accuse us of not listening, I think what they're really saying is, you're not agreeing with me. But again, that's my own opinion on this. As far as, as where I stand on this issue, to me it's pretty clear that um, past town councils never affirmatively uh, claim their rights to this and other paper streets back um, when there was, in the 1990s, there was a state statute that said towns had to affirmatively say, yeah, we're going to claim that street. Otherwise, it was going to uh, defer back to the abutters. Um, and the towns, as a result of that, I think the towns claimed ownership is what we call clouded. Uh, and in order to clear this, to clear this title, uh, the action we're taking tonight, tonight will clear that title so that we can move forward and guarantee public access in perpetuity. I know there has been a lot of concern and questions have come up from people, oh, well, you know, you can get rid of easements and this and that. Yeah, you can get rid of easements, but as we, our, our attorney sitting in the front seat, here, and I think you would agree with me that all parties to an agreement have to agree in order to expunge an easement. The town is a party to these agreements. I can't see the town 
expunging these agreements. Um, so this is why I feel, and again, I'm coming from my own background as a real estate broker. I see this type of thing frequently. Uh, we're clearing title in order to guarantee public access because as of right now, tonight, before we take this vote, there is no guarantee this public access there if this were to go um, through a court process. I am very grateful that we had so many people involved in this uh, throughout the past couple of years. It's been heard, it's been discussed, it's been looked at. We've had attorneys involved, we've had the abutters involved, we've had the neighbors involved. And to me, this is a win-win solution. So I will be supporting this tonight. Trump says. Yeah, <clears throat> I guess I, I've been pretty consistent on this issue, and I'm still in the same place. Well, I will not be supporting this tonight. And a couple things, and it kind of echoes what we've heard. I, I am concerned about have we really, sitting up here, I, I look at my role as I'm really here to listen to the majority view of our community. I'm up here to evaluate things. And I can tell you, for every, I've only gotten a couple of positive responses and emails and others thinking that everybody thinks this is the right thing to do. Probably of a ratio of 100 to 1, everybody I have talked to in this community has said we shouldn't discontinue Avenue 2. So I, I'm going to, I really believe in that. I'm going to, that's part of my reason why I think this is not a good idea. Um, the second thing is, you know, we talked about we're trying to avoid litigation risk on one end and maybe losing access. I think we have totally underestimated the mood of this community and also there is litigation risk for the private rights, which we have just dismissed, but I think it's a very real possibility in giving sort of where we are in this community right now, I wouldn't discount that. And we've had some litigation issues in front of us and they haven't exactly turned out in our favor, so I'm a little leery of the risk. Um, Third thing is I think, I'm not sure based on some of the questions and some of the things that have gone on, I'll take ownership. I don't think I've done my due diligence at asking the right questions and demanding answers to things. There have been things that have been put on the table that I don't always remember exploring in great detail about all our options. We seem to have been, and I think it's pretty typical, you get locked into a pathway and you just follow that pathway. So I don't think I'm comfortable that we have done all of our due diligence, dotted our I's, crossed our T's. Um, and then I think the fourth thing that we, we talked about, um, you know, we talked about guaranteed access. I'm not convinced that this gives us guaranteed access. I mean, we had our own attorney say nothing's guaranteed in the future. So I, I, I'm just not sure we're in the right place. And lastly, I think there is, and you heard an echo in this room, I am greatly concerned about what's happening in our community, how we're interacting with each other, this is a case where we had a, a wealthy property owner that bought a piece of property with full knowledge that for a hundred years people had been using this as a right of way to get to the beach. This individual saw a technicality, a loophole in the law where they could take that property so that they are able to enrich themselves by building an extension to their home that's probably going to be worth a million dollars to that person. That person also knows the majority of the community does not support that. I'm really concerned we're doing that. The other property of Butter, when they came to us in December, that, are, are, that is getting valuable property, tried to put restrictions on that property. They tried to restrict access to the beach in hours. They tried to be able to self-police to get rid of the undesirables on the beach. They wanted to put up signage that made it confusing about whether it was still really a right of way. Those things are very concerning to me. So I think this is the wrong step for the town. I think we will, I think we need, I think we have misjudged where the community is on this, so I am voting no. Councilor <clears throat> Gaza. So uh, uh, I don't think there's really any surprises where I stand on this either. Um, I, I try and separate my emotions from the analytical side of things, and we've heard a lot of talk on this council and in the public about risk and risk benefit ratio, risk reward ratios. Um, I, I do want to thank. Um, one of the speakers, I learned a great phrase, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this one for a while, uh, agrimonious special interest politics. I love that. That's, that's beautiful. Because, and I, I don't mean that as a, as a, I'm not trying to be a snide or, 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 or uh, rude or anything. I, I, I agree with that statement. But it's both sides. And, I, and the reason I say that is because it really seems to strike me as a counselor that it depends on your perspective of how you see this going down. So we've, had, we've heard things like we're, we're giving the land away. 
Um, my understanding is we don't own the land. We own a right of way through that land. So it's not our physical property. The, the town doesn't have ownership of that. We have a right of way through it. Um, I've heard we've, uh, the town has supported the interest of a single individual over the benefit of the town. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, I, I, I think um, and I hope all parties would agree, if that were the case, we wouldn't have invited the, the, the community in. We wouldn't have invited all of the parties to sit down amongst themselves without counsel to try and come up with a solution that everybody could live with. And that was achieved, by the way. So individuals who may not like this outcome were also ones that participated in that process. So I, I just don't know how we are more transparent. How could we be more open? We, we extended the process well beyond the normal legal requirements of this. If we had special interests in mind, why would we wait two years? Why would we keep stringing this along? Why would we have continued public comment if we weren't listening, if we weren't hearing that? So I'm, I'm only saying that not to be argumentative, but just to say that it really, it, 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 we have to think about the perspective of it. And if you agree with the situation, if you agree with the decision to discontinue it, and you agree that, you know, do we, should we be um, fighting and risking town resources on an issue like this, or should we be trying to negotiate to get the desired outcome? I'll be honest with you, as a business person and, and as an engineer, I'll negotiate 10 days a week if I can get the desired outcome. It's always much better than being adversarial and, and rolling the dice and putting our fate in somebody else's hands, because by negotiating, we can control our own fate. And, and quite frankly, I do think this is the best outcome of the town. I've said it from the very beginning. My personal number one goal in this entire process was to ensure in perpetuity that the public, the citizens of this town of Scarborough have access through that corridor to the beach. And I feel we've achieved that. And I feel we've achieved that with a very limited expense of resources versus going to court and fighting and, and, and potentially losing. So. Uh, I, I'm also a little disturbed when I hear, I don't feel like we've done our, our, our due diligence. I, we've had two years to explore this. I think we've all, you know, quite frankly, I think we've all been talking about this for so long. Are, are there other options? Are there other potentials? Of course there are. There always are. You know, I, I, but I think if you disagree with the outcome, you're going to find reasons to disagree with it. But if you support the outcome and your goal was <laughs> access, we've achieved that. We've achieved that. So I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable supporting this proposal. I, I think it's the right thing for, for all the parties involved, especially the citizens of Scarborough. And uh, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, um, I, I respect everybody that's, that's been involved in this process on both sides. And I think we've, we've heard the arguments. And I hope that we can all understand that moving forward is is, is what needs to happen now, and not continuously looking back and arguing about coulda, shoulda, woulda. So I, I'm going to support the motion. Mm -hmm. Councilor Foley. Thank you. Um, so I think, as I look up and down this table, the one thing that I 500% believe and agree upon is that we all have the same goal of, of preserving public access. Mm -hmm. The difference is we have different ideas about how we achieve that goal. So um, I don't question anyone's thoughts or motives uh, in terms of what they want for a desired outcome. I just question sometimes our process. And um, I do think there is risk either way. There is risk if we do nothing. There's risk if we uh, discontinue the road facing a lawsuit from the folks who do have private rights potentially. There's risk uh, in it not necessarily being granted in perpetuity as has been promised. So I think it's a matter of weighing which one of those risks is more likely to hit. And I think, I don't know that any of us could actually uh, say which one will be true. Um, my preference would have been, or the thing I guess that I go back to is the very beginning that Mr. Gendron never took us to court. We just started negotiating without even, you know, and I, I, I believe firmly in my heart, first of all, that we would have an excellent case if we went to court, if he did choose to go down that road. And secondly, uh, if we did go down that road at that point, that's when negotiations could have and should have started. 
hindsight's always 2020. It's two years later. We've already gone down that road. I get it. Um, but I also have a firm belief in my heart and soul that it is never too late to pause uh, until an action has actually been taken. So if for some reason, even in the final hour, a better solution comes to the table uh, that could still create a win-win-win for everybody, don't we owe it to the town to take a look at that? And so, you know, again, my preference all along would have been, you know, that we didn't do anything. We waited, but here we are. So um, I'm not convinced that it is going to be saved in perpetuity. Um, and in terms of our timeline, again, there's no legal parameter that says we have to do this tonight. There was never a legal parameter in front of us saying we have to do this because we were not, we're not being sued or we're not taken to court. So I, I'm not going to support it. Um, I know there's a lot of disagreement about that, and uh, but I hope that you know at the end of the day, just as I can respect your view, you respect mine. Um, I also do want to do what I believe is right for the public, um, and I, I think there was a better solution potentially. So I will not support this discontinuous. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rowan. So thank you. Um, so um, one of the first things um, that kind of first issues that came up when I started serving on this council was actually Avenue 2. Um, we, my recollection is we received a letter from uh, Mr. Gendron's attorney uh, that outlined um, his, the basis <coughs> of um, his legal argument for why um, he had claim to uh, that piece of land. Um, and at that point, it was turned over to our attorney. Um, and uh, the, as you heard in I don't recall if it was at the last meeting of the meeting before when it was outlined by uh, Mr. McCall. Uh, we had um, uh, the opinion of our attorney was that Mr. Gendron had uh, and his attorney had prepared a very strong case um, that um, we were we to take it to court, we had no guarantee of winning and not necessarily even a likelihood of winning. Um, at that point, um, I do believe that that. Um, uh, I asked, uh, or it was asked, about, well, what are our options at this point? Um, some of the things that we considered were, uh, and dismissed, were a variance to the setback. Um, there was some concern at that point about uh, both the fact that this is a conforming lot, and so therefore it wouldn't necessarily qualify, um, as well as the precedent that would be set uh, were we to give a, uh, a setback uh, variant. So it was, it was definitely considered at the time. It's been one of the solutions that's been offered recently, uh, but it, it was um, discussed and determined it wasn't feasible. Another, th another thing that's been brought up recently is potentially a contract zone. Um, I think that, um, I think it was mentioned from the podium as well as via email, um, and I, th I think that, uh, that when we talked about the variance of the setback, this would set a much worse precedent because it gets that much closer toward um, uh, toward spot zoning and, and the precedent that you set by the fact that here's a wealthy individual who comes before us for any reason um, and, and uh, we're willing to, to bend and change our, our zoning law so that they can build a bigger house. Um, so I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is if there's a better solution, uh, to Councillor Foley's point, I'm still waiting to hear what that is. I mean, even though we are at the 11th hour, I haven't heard a necessarily a better solution. There was mention recently about, well, could we go for a deed rather than uh, an easement on the, the 10 feet of a public right of way? Um, I do believe, again, when, when our lawyer spoke from the podium, he talked about the fact that, um, that in order to extinguish that easement, uh, we would need to essentially either abandon our claim or agree to the to give back that easement um, so that there's really no possibility. I've heard many people mention it, but I don't know what that would be in order for us to lose access to, to that right of way. As long as we continue to use that path, our, we have a right to prevent fences from going up, prevent signs from going up, uh, to make sure that we're able to use it uh, as long as the public wants to. Um, in terms of the argument about us not listening, um, I, I actually have to agree that it's pretty crappy that the, the neighborhood association had to hire a lawyer when, when, uh, in order to get to the table. I think that sucks. Um, and we, we definitely dropped the ball on that. Um, I could have done better. Um, sorry, I'm a little scattered. Um, 
But what I do see is that what, what we're doing is uh, our lawyer pointed out that our, our case was fairly weak. Um, right now, we have the clouded um, claim to a 50-foot right-of-way that we are exchanging for a 10-foot right-of-way and a 50-foot conservation easement. So nothing can be built inside that 50 feet. Uh, we additionally um, have that in perpetuity. Um, as discussed, there's, there's very limited avenues to extinguish that easement. Um, I think the other thing that I heard was that we were um, choosing the interest of a single wealthy individual over the town. Well, the, were this thing to litigate, were we to lose, we could lose access to, to the path. So there could be nothing, no way to get to the beach from the corner of Avenue 2 at King Street um, directly to the beach. Um, that could go away. Uh, so this is, this is the way that we can guarantee that we keep it in perpetuity. Um, I think the other thing that I've heard is that uh, we should be willing to defend it. I think my point is not that I'm afraid that we would litigate it or have cost. It's more that um, the chance that we would lose that litigation and we would lose the right and control of that path. Um, I think this, recently there have been a couple dis decisions from the Supreme Court of Maine uh, that were went against public access to the beach, and that was uh, Goose Rocks and um, I think it was Brun Brunswick or Bath that uh, that just had a similar decision. Now, obviously, those were very different cases, and they were they were individualized. But it just shows that um, that risk is real, um, and that um, that we we could lose uh, in court. Um, and I think that uh, that had those town councils, or I tried to put myself in, in the shoes of the town councilors of those town, and had they been presented with an opportunity to um, make a compromise that would maintain access to those resources that um, that I think they would regret not taking it. And so I, I kind of look, viewed it from that lens, uh, from a risk aversion, that uh, I'm willing to accept the compromise uh, in order to retain that. Um, I think there, there are certainly problems with it. I, I, I don't like the fact that we have to move that path. Um, I think that, that it's a, um, a beautiful spot. The point's been made that that we are that we have to go in and now disturb the dune in order to move the path, um, but that's unfortunate. But that's that's just unfortunately when you're when you're negotiating, um, sometimes you have to make compromises. So that's it. I'm I'm intending to support it. So. Thank you, Councilor Bailey. Uh, thank you. Um, for those of you um, on the council who agree, I agree with, thank you for reading my notes because you said everything I wanted to say. <laughs> um, but even to those I don't agree with, I do appreciate your perspective because it is very important to understand that there are two sides to this. Uh, when I was chair last year, um, we started the process of the workshop in which we invited the citizen group to participate in. And I had asked a question at the end of the workshop that said, in the end of this, if we don't get exactly what everyone wants, what do we do? And the citizen said, you need to use your best judgment because that's what you've been elected to do for this town. And I believe that as a council and as a culture, we are very good at trying to do what is the best for this town. We might have differences of opinion, we may disagree, um, but it comes down to our individual perspectives for which we've been elected to do. So I want to say thank you to the council and to the citizens for the participation in this process. It's been very lengthy, but I think it's a very good process. Um, I do think that we achieved what we set out to do, and that is to make sure that we continue public access. Um, I did want to mention that there was a comment regarding a really kind of future, like, sorry, past council's decisions regarding paper streets as well as future, because when we talk about perpetuity, you're really talking about a future council, um, because a future council could distinguish this, I suppose, and sit there and say that they give it to it. I mean, that's the only, I think, the only action that could actually allow that to happen. That we can't um, afford to um, kind of hypothesize about because we have no idea what could happen in 50 years. Most of us probably won't be here. Um, but I did want to mention regarding past councils because I actually was here for both Avenue 6 and Avenue 7 when they were discontinued. And I do recall, it, I believe it was in 2004, in which the town council did bring up in conversation um, the issue of paper streets and its affirmation. And what we did, if I recall that um, the conversation was that we said that we were going to do nothing. And the reason is because it was too complex for, for us to be able to identify what those actual paper streets were. Keep in mind, it was a very different time. It was 
15 years ago, 14 years ago. Um, but we did, I do recall that conversation, and we said that we would leave future councils to take care of that on a case-by-case -case basis. So whether that, in hindsight, that might not have been the best approach for us to have taken, but it, it, that's my recollection of what we did back in, I think it was around 2004 or six, and that was with either six or seven, I can't remember which one that was. So um, with that, I, I just wanted to say that um, I feel that um, <coughs> negotiations, the discussions, um, the communications that have come out of this have been very good. I think that we've achieved what we needed to achieve and I'm going to be supporting it. Thank you. Uh, many of the reasons are recited by my fellow counselors are reasons that I have to support this. Uh, at the cornerstone of it is that uh, there's a great uncertainty as to uh, what the ownership rights are. Uh, we don't own the land. We're not giving away the land. We have a right of passage, public passage over that land. Can't have big parties there, can't have swings, can't have, uh, uh, it, it is a right of way. Just like any public street, that, that's what this is. Uh, so when we all started out, I think we all agreed that uh, r retaining public access was the key. Uh, and that's really been uh, the objective from the beginning because the title does have uh, uh, a cloud on it. It's very unclear as to what the ownership of the land is and whether an easement does, a public easement does or does not exist on it. And we are tonight hopefully going to establish that uh, the public shall always have the right to uh, use Avenue 2. Uh, I think it has the side advantage of, uh, which is rare in these cases, of putting the land back on the tax rolls. And so uh, for whatever benefit the assessor determines, and that's the assessor's job, uh, uh, we will then have the benefit of taxation of this property. Uh, I think we had uh, a good debate through almost the entirety of this. And so I'm, I join Councillor Babine's comments in that regard. I really did think it was uh, uh, helpful, the uh, Pine Point Neighborhood Association, so-called, uh, I thought, uh, came to the table and made a real contribution in getting an agreement that was better than it was before <coughs> they participated. So I was pleased with that. Uh, uh, I really believe that when people say we don't listen, I, I, don't, I don't feel angry at them because a lot of times when I feel passionate about something and I might not be on the winning side, I say, well, you're just not listening to me. <laughs> and, and, and it's just the frustration of the moment. Uh, I think people who watch this and know what our goals were have understood we have been listening and tried the best we have, and even though we might not have unanimity in our, our views on how to get to the outcome, as one counselor said, the goal was always the same, which was public access be preserved. Uh, I never really thought about this in terms of helping a single individual, whether that person was poor or rich or somewhere in between. To me, it was always about public access, and that was the only factor that was influencing me, not the person who was on the other side of the table uh, negotiating with the town. Uh, and so I, I, I think we've reached a good point on this, and uh, unless someone has another comment or a question, I'm gonna call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Five to two, thank you. Order 18-24, uh, act on the request to remove approval of the names posted to the various town committees and boards by the Appointments and Negotiations Committee at the March 7, 2018 Town Council meeting. Uh, Mr. Babine is the chair of the Appointments and Negotiations Committee and I'd like to him to introduce us. Absolutely, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Appointments Committee did post, and I'm gonna summarize what is in this order just so um, I'd like to especially give recognition to those persons leaving. Um, their uh, posts as well as the, per, um, the other people who are staying on and moving up and taking on more responsibility because we have a lot of volunteers in Scarborough that deserves credit. Um, on the Energy Committee, Michael Wallace will be removed from the committee due to a lack of attendance and we are recommending that we appoint Deborah McDonough as a full voting member. 
uh, on the Housing Alliance. Uh, we are asking that the Town Council remove Tim Peters uh, due to a lack of attendance. Um, we, we move Susan Oglis from a full voting member to first alternate and that Rachel Hendrickson be moved from a first alternate to full voting member. That was at their request. On the Shellfish Conservation Commission, I'm recommending a returnee, uh, Tim Downs, to be appointed as a full voting member. And then on the Zoning Board of Appeals is to move Ed Belay from a full voting member to first alternate and to move Karen Shoup, if I pronounce that right, I, I hope, from first alternate to a full voting member. And again, um, oh, and then also to appoint Mal Melina Torrens as the second alternate. And those changes on the first two were also at their recommendation. Thank you. Uh, does this require a public hearing? No, public, so. public comment, if you want. Public comment on the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, posted names that are now before us for approval. See none, I'll accept the motion. Move approval of order number 18 024. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion, comment. Councilor Yeah, I'll just quickly just say thank you to those people volunteering. Mm -hmm. It is a volunteer position. Um, if you're interested in, in contributing to the town, uh, <laughs> I strongly would uh, request you take a look at what we have for openings and find a committee that you want to participate in. It's, it's a great way to kind of get your feet wet and get to know what's going on in town and contribute to your community. So thank you to those who have volunteered, and we could always use more help. Do you have other comments? Councilor? Um, so I just wanted to um, reiterate uh, what Councilor Chiazzo just said, but also to mention that at the next meeting I will have a list of vacancies. So um, hopefully doing some advertising on the cable channel, looking for um, volunteers. And um, my personal uh, favorite is that we do have several positions open on the cable television uh, committee, um, which I, I thought I had one person, but he hasn't brought in his papers yet, but we're trying to get that sucker going again. So. Oh, you got a long wait. I know. <laughs> Other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, new business, order 18 025, first reading and schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments uh, to Chapter 313A, the Town of Scarborough Property Tax Assistance Ordinance, Section 5. Determination of eligibility and amount of eligibility, subsection 2, eligibility for renters, and update the application form. Uh, Chair of the Ordinance Committee is Councilor Katerina, and I'll look to you. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, what we're doing here is a real quick, it's a, well, basically a ministerial change, I guess you'd call it, but it, it, it will impact or help those who live in manufactured homes on leased land. That was kind of a loophole that they were falling through and weren't qualifying for the senior tax credit, uh, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So the more people who can qualify for this, the better. So, um, and bear with me here. Basically what we're doing is we're saying in under section five, uh, sub two eligibility for renters in the case for renters tax assessed for purposes of section 51AI shall be deemed to, who struck B and it's include, to include, is the way to read, 80% of rent, rent payable from own funds, et cetera. Thank you. Uh, anyone wishing to address the council on this, please approach the podium. Uh, Don Hamill, Bay Street in Pine Point. Um, you know, I'd first like to say, I think this, uh, um, measures like this are very promising. You know, the town is, uh, defined a need and is, is you know very thought very carefully about it and is designed to plan that uh, to try to address those needs and to expand that I think that is that is very encouraging you know a noble effort what I would say though however is it does not address the root cause and the root cause is that we are way out of whack in terms of our debt load and what's happening with our property taxes in town so you know that's the the elephant in the room that we continue to not be able to get our arms around. So um, um, in encourage the initiative, but uh, have to also appeal to the council to really start taking a very serious look at that chart that seems to be going off the page in terms of uh, our debt load and the impact that has on taxes. Thank you. Thank you, other comments? 
uh, accept the motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. That's okay. Though. Yeah, no, I, 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 I fully agree this is, this is the right thing to do. And I think we also talked about expanding, or I shouldn't say expanding, evaluating the program even further um, based on whether it's increased eligibility requirements or increased the pool of, of available funds or something along those lines to, to um, better serve the community a little bit. So my question, I guess, through the chair to ordinance would be, is that something that's going to be taken up relatively soon, or is that something that we're going to be... Um, maybe approaching later on after budget season, let's say, or something like that. Um, I, I have not had any discussions regarding that. So. Okay, but I do. I mean, I do think that there sure. there is uh, uh, as a part of our goals, we we really listen, and right. affordable housing was also a part of our. So they kind of come together. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, uh, Councilor Katarina and I, spent uh, the morning with the Meals on Wheels people. Uh, and uh, and we saw uh, uh, a lot of people for whom affordable housing is critical. Yeah. Uh, people in their 80s and 90s, uh, and so uh, I w I would think that when we uh, look at the comp plan, the uh, guidance that we intend to give to the Scarborough Downs people, uh, and I think they get it that affordable housing is is essential and. Councilor Katarina and I heard it in spades mm. that uh, affordable housing for people who don't qualify mm. for the kind of affordable housing that gets defined in our ordinances right. as being less than 60 or 70 percent of mm. the median income uh, in the region. Uh, uh, they find that Scarborough's housing costs in the 300 350, 400 are, are out of reach. And so uh, that stock of housing would be a, uh, so I do think that uh, whether it's with the ordinance committee or with other aspects of our review, because it's going to be a collective re review for, uh, for these issues, uh, we will get to it. That'd be my sense. Uh, I, I will say that uh, uh, Mobile homes, and we have many mobile homes in town, uh, they are on rented property. The mobile home occupant, owner, owns the building, the structure, uh, and for which the, the, the tax gets a tax bill. But it isn't huge. Uh, but they do pay a fairly sizable uh, rent cost. And so when you add those two together, which is what this amendment makes clear we intend to do, uh, they do become eligible if they meet the other qualifications. And so that's really, we're trying to get the word out as a part of getting this ordinance. I think we would have interpreted this ordinance as already uh, allowing for this, but I think part of our effort to make sure that those in the mobile home community know about it is uh, this kind of notoriety. So other comments for people? Uh, I, I just want to, uh, uh, kind of piggyback on Council Chiazzo's. Uh, I think this is a great step because I think it was always intended and we may just simply have overlooked right. it. So I'm glad that, um, and I do want to just make sure that they're actually referenced as manufactured homes rather than mobile homes. Um, because I remember going through some approval processes for those uh, particular uh, parks um, and it's a very sensitive label. Um, the other piece is that, um, you know, I've had conversations with just about all of you. This needs to be expanded. I think there needs to be. I've looked at actually my hometown in West Bath has a special exemption for veterans um, that also <laughs> have to meet income and, and uh, age eligibility and things like that. So there are creative ways in which you can broaden um, the wings uh, to help people out because they do need it very badly. So I truly hope that we uh, expand this much, much sooner than later. Thank you. Other comments? I do just want to point out, though not technically part of the ordinance, uh, we have modified the uh, application, which uh, will really ensure that these costs are captured. Uh, I think three different provisions and a couple of others were modified to make sure that um, our intake process is sure to be able to capture these additional costs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were prepared to do that on an administrative level, but I think it does make perfect sense to bring it to the council, if only to get the notoriety. Uh, so I appreciate your attention to it. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor? 
Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Non-action items, non-standing special committee reports and liaison reports. Let's start down with uh, Councilor Casey. So, uh, first of all, my apologies to the council. I was absent at the last meeting, um, traveling on business. That seems to be more frequent lately than 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 not. So, uh, a couple of these meetings took place prior to that, but I did want to inform the council of of the outcome. Uh, transportation met on February 27th. Um, we we had a, a fairly extensive agenda. Um, we looked at uh, PAC's access to the transit plan. We were introduced to the new assistant planner, Jamel Torres. He's going to be uh, a very active participant, I think, on transportation and a great addition to the town. Um, we looked at our council goals, reviewed our council goals, um, and I will say that every council that I'm, or every uh, um, uh, committee that I'm the liaison to has taken this up, so um, it's been, uh, uh, I think, an interesting conversation to, to be able to sit there and talk about those goals because there's usually some questions that come with it, so I don't know if other councilors are experiencing that as well. Um, more, more clarifying <coughs> questions than questions of why. So I just want to be clear with that. Um, updates, GP COGS, merger with PACS. Um, that was a, that's been a, um, a, an ongoing process. We talked a little bit about how that's going to impact Scarborough. It doesn't appear to be much of a change other than just an administrative change. Um, we're still going to be uh, rolling through that process uh, much the same way we have in the past. We looked at Gorham Road, Gorham Road Safe Routes, um, which is basically a program, um, if I recall, uh, Safe Routes Merged, um, um, that's, that's um, I, if I remember it, it's more of an adaptive process, but I could be getting this confused with the adaptive signals. The adaptive signals are basically a, let's say, Payne Road start in South Portland. Payne Road starts in South Portland, but it's a DOT road, so there's a process in place to manage the signals across the entire length of the road in order to help traffic flow better. So. Um, that and uh, MTA advisory updates for the turnpike widening. So lots of stuff happening in transportation. Uh, also, um, with the comprehensive plan coming out, we've been put on notice that we're going to be reviewing that as well. Long range planning met. Um, again, that was also a very, uh, very broad um, uh, agenda. And I don't know if Councillor Katarina addressed this at the last meeting. So if you have, I'll defer. I don't know. remember. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, so very quickly, we looked at some proposed zone amendments. Um, Scarborough, the, the, the development group from Scarborough Downs was there, um, and we looked at um, district boundaries, permitted uses, and signage. Those are some things that long range planning is chewing on, and a recommendation from that group will come back to the council in terms of uh, the, um, the outline of the zone and where it comes into play and signage and, and things like that. So, very, very robust conversation in long range planning. Um, I, I will say, um, we're still chewing on it, which means it's, it's, it's a good discussion. Um, we certainly didn't have 100% continuity in the group, but um, lots of great questions and uh, a very strong desire to bring that group back again and get some clarification on some things before a recommendation comes before council. And, and also comprehensive plan updates. Uh, I think we're getting to the point where we're starting to see something back from the consultant. We're going to start uh, that process of engaging the different committees, looking at the review process, and um, getting some reports out hopefully to council. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, just a quick update from the Finance Committee. We did meet this week. We have been working for a while on trying to consolidate some of our debt policies. We did approve it. It will be coming forward in an upcoming meeting for this Council's discussion and approval. Um, we just, you know, it is budget season, so we started some preliminary conversations about budget and where we are and some of the things. There are some unique issues that are a little bit different for us, a, a little bit change in our, in our debt because of some of the things that we have done and also trying to find room in the budget for the reevaluation we've talked about. Um, so I'm sure Tom will sharpen his pencil and, and bring something to the table to all look at, but that process is underway and we talked a little bit about that and what that meant and what that's going to look like. My suspicion is that, as usual, the budget process and conversation will be challenging again, so we, we're starting that process. Good. Thank you. Councilor Gettering. Yeah, um, ordinance. We did talk about uh, the possibility, potential perhaps, of adding something regarding odor to um, our good neighbor policy. Mm -hmm. We're examining that. We discussed tonight, obviously, the property tax relief um, mm -hmm. uh, change update. We're also starting to explore uh, mooring and mooring uses in uh, the uh, 
uh, river and wherever along the coastline here where moorings are allowed. We have a huge backlog of people who are waiting to use moorings, so we're going to be looking at, you know, are people with current mooring licenses using them correctly? What can we do, be doing to facilitate, to make sure that they're being used uh, right uh, and whatever? And I know that uh, moorings are a hot issue along the coast because uh, they are limited in how many there are and how many people want them. So that's going to be an ongoing discussion. If that's of interest to you, we will be discussing it again in our April meeting. So. Peter. It, it, just, a, just a question, I think. Coastal Harbor also has been working on that same project, so I don't mm -hmm. know if there's some chance to coordinate or something, but yeah, that'd be there, good there seems I didn't to be you guys were. two different directions here, so good time. I think it belongs in one place or the other, but not both, so. Yeah. We can talk. Uh, I will say the Harbor Master Ian Anderson was at ordinance, so yeah. presumably yeah. he's has a sense of what he's talking about. Liaison, but I know that they, they had started that process, mm -hmm. and so I totally understand, but just yeah. saying, we just need to get clear on who's going to own it, that's great. Right. <laughs> and, the, and we certainly should benefit from their expertise since Absolutely. they have a great deal more expertise than the ordinance committee come, does. So we will try and take that into account and yeah. coordinate that. Yeah. Council Foley. Uh, thank you. The uh, Eastern Trail Alliance continues work uh, primarily on their big spring events, one of which is coming up right around the corner um, Saturday, April 7th at Camp Ketcha. Uh, starts at 7 p.m. Tickets are $50, and it's it's called the Taste of the Town Gala. So there are a yeah. whole lot of local restaurants uh, providing samples. Um, <laughs> so uh, you can come and sample a whole bunch of different restaurants if you so choose. Dance to the time pilots, and then also uh, engage in the raffles, uh, including a very special trip with uh, none other than Bill Green and Denny Denham mm -hmm. out on the water, and that includes lunch for two at Great Diamond Island. It's a great adventure. I did it last year, and um, you would not regret bidding on that. So please consider coming out to that. The other event for the Eastern Trail Alliance uh, then would be the, um, in conjunction with, uh, in partnership with O'Reilly's Cure, the John Andrews 5K, which is on Saturday, May 19th. Uh, that can be walked or run or both, as I often do it. Um, so feel free to find some information on Facebook about that and sign up as well. Uh, the Conservation Commission also met last week. Um, they continue work on project selection. And it was actually a very rigorous conversation around uh, there's a strong desire of the commission to uh, potentially take on the project of creating a climate change action plan for the town. Um, I'll be reaching out to each of you individually to find <coughs> out some kind of gain, but because it's such a big project uh, that unless it had, you know, a lot of support from the town council, they don't know that it would necessarily be a viable project. So I want to kind of pick your brains about how you're, you feel about that. <coughs> the other Plus. thing, project that they're considering is, is doing, having to do with plastic bags. Uh, and uh, so there'll be more to come on both of those, I'm sure. Thank you. Councilor Rowe. I have nothing. Thank, thank you. you. Councilor Baber. Uh, thank you. I already mentioned about appointments. Um, so before our next meeting, I'll have a list of all openings um, beginning a campaign on the cable TV. Again, the cable TV committee, the, the, the highly coveted and hard to come by positions are open. There's six. Um, did want to mention um, the library uh, will be um, workshopping with the town council on April 4th. Um, before our regular meeting uh, to talk about their goals um, and how they align with our goals as well as to talk about their strategic plan that they um, initiated last year and then to also talk about the future um, around the library. So um, what I wanted to offer to each of you if you would like, if you have any specific questions that you think might require some research, I would like to give them kind of a heads up so that they are prepared. I've already given, I know they've talked to Tom. Um, and I've given them some background as far as where to kind of do their presentation. But if you have anything specific, please feel free to uh, share that with me. And I'll ask uh, the director and the chair um, or the president of their board to um, get those answers for you. And I did want to ask uh, the chairman um, on April 10th, um, so April 4th, we are having a presentation from the manager regarding the budget, which is not a first reading, but a presentation on April 10th, the finance committee. Uh, we'll be taking up um, departmental budgets. I cannot make that meeting, so if you could sit in my stead. Um, I'm a, a president of a nonprofit in Portland that is negotiating the sale of their building to Maine Medical Center, so I need to, 
I, just, I have to be committed to that given the seriousness of it. So I apologize for my sure absence. I can attend that. Good. Uh, town manager's report. Yes, a couple things to update. It's uh, very busy, it's certainly budget time, but uh, in, in between there's a lot of other things uh, going on. Public safety building, uh, I'm really pleased to report the sort of teamwork that uh, we expected and hoped is really coming to fruition. I think it was a very wise decision to bring an owner's rep on early. We've got uh, some technical support, if you will, supporting us uh, in conjunction with the construction management firm and our design team. So it's really uh, collaborated very well. Um, most recently, they met this morning. Uh, the uh, construction management team actually came up with their first cost estimate and compared it to some of our early cost estimates. Uh, the first blush uh, was frightening. It was a big separation, but this group got together this morning and it's within 5%. So uh, it just demonstrates the value of having a lot of uh, committed folks to kind of work toward the same goal. I'll also say that the building committee, I think, is really kind of settling in and finding a, a good way for them to contribute to the process because a lot of this is really technical and it's likely to get even more technical. Uh, but they found a way to involve them and from all reports I hear, um, that seems to be working very well as part of that whole team approach. Uh, the other matter that we're considering, and I'll just kind of throw it out there and interested in what kind of reaction from council and the public, one of the decisions uh, that we're looking at right now and frankly have to make a decision in the next couple of weeks is the communications tower. Uh, it, it come, should come as no surprise, there needs to be a communications tower. The plan has always shown it to be proximate to the new building, kind of right out in our mm -hmm. parking lot, if you will. And before we commit to that, uh, I, we're looking at what other options might be available. Um, one of the challenges with this site here is that it's located next to the building. It actually adds cost and complication to some of the foundation work and such. Um, one of the options is looking at the water tower site, which is town-owned now, uh, that's close to businesses, uh, close to the school. So we've done some initial work uh, canvassing kind of all businesses in that block. And we've at least posed the question, floated it to the school administration. Uh, so we're interested to see if that's something worth pursuing. Uh, from our technical advisors, it's preferred, it's higher. Uh, it, it has many preferred options. It's cheaper because of not the complication of a building right next door to it. So we're interested in exploring that. Uh, there's also an opportunity potentially for cellular service. And I mentioned that I think that comes with some challenges, but it also, um, as I recall, and many of you will recall, our transmission tower ordinance requires co-location. Mm -hmm. And there are towers rumored in this vicinity as we speak. So there may be some value in exploring that. Again, that comes with some, uh, some challenges as well. So if you have any thoughts about that, just basic concept, I'd be interested to hear. In terms of the comp plan, things are ramping back up. As was reported earlier, the consultant is actually starting to provide written first drafts, if you will, that long-range planning is going to start digging into. Uh, as they start rolling in, we'll parcel them out to the appropriate committees for review and input. Uh, our ROI uh, modeling capabilities will be in our hands sometime in, uh, in the month of April. And we're really excited. Uh, this is a, a computer model that has over 100 different inputs that are customized and calibrated to Scarborough. And it not only considers uh, return on in terms of tax value, but uh, for us, it also uh, factors in impact and cost. So uh, it will be a really powerful uh, information decision-making tool that we're anxious to use. Scarborough Downs, I think, is going to be a great uh, opportunity to start testing that model. <coughs> and hopefully we can find win-wins all the way through. Um, we shall see. Uh, we're also preparing a survey that will appear in the leader and also be available online. The survey will be probably a dozen questions or so and are intended to validate the input received last fall in terms of the guiding principles and to dig a little deeper on a number of things that the consultants heard. Um, so look for that. Uh, we think it's important to make sure it's sent directly to every home in Scarborough and so we've coordinated with the leader to have it appear in their paper. Uh, so I guess that's comp plan. Uh, budget, as was mentioned, uh, I'm working toward presentation on April 4th. We have scheduled at the chairperson's uh, direction a special single item agenda meeting for April 11th. So get that on your calendar if it's not there already. Uh, that will be for first reading. 
and budget review will consume the time of finance committee through the month of April and into mid-May. Uh, they'll be meeting uh, every week, uh, generally on Tuesdays, but not every Tuesday, uh, <laughs> starting at 6 p.m. And then a couple of quick things. Uh, Gorham Road, this is a project that you're probably aware of. It's multi-phase. Uh, there is construction funding in for phase one, which is essentially route one to Maple Avenue. I mention this because uh, Unitil is interested in uh, upgrading uh, the underground gas line in mm -hmm. that stretch, and we're certainly supportive of them doing it in advance of our work. They'll start mobilizing in the next couple of weeks, and the work will be, uh, I'm thankful to report that most of it is actually directional bore, so it's not open <coughs> trench construction. They'll have a, a pit uh, at which the, they'll be feeding the line through, mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, they'll be, uh, single lane traffic on occasion, so it's going to be a bit of a confusion. That job is going to be so challenging start to finish just because yeah. of how vital that is as a transportation ar um, artery for us. <laughs> um, following their work, we do expect to start our municipal side of the work with culvert replacements in the uh, favorable time of the year, kind of the, the August-September time frame, really in August when it's uh, the, the water, the groundwater conditions are most favorable. And then there's a lot of work outside of the right-of-way, so that will be continuing. That won't have much disruption, but there'll be a lot of visible activity starting, again, within two weeks. Uh, two quick housekeeping. Uh, I think Tony shared with you uh, the annual Scarborough ch uh, Community Chamber uh, Municipal Officials Dinner. It's scheduled for Wednesday, May 9, <coughs> at uh, Atria, which is the uh, assisted living facility here in Oak Hill, starting at 6 p.m. If you haven't received that notice, we'll get it out to you. They're looking for an RSVP. And lastly, workshops that are on the agenda. Uh, Councilor Babine mentioned we have library trustees coming in April 4th. We are uh, looking to schedule a TIF 101, I'll call it, or kind of a, a fundamental tutorial, if you will, on tax increment financing on April 11th, if uh, everyone's willing to come an hour early that night. It's six. And then I don't have a schedule yet, but the Maine Turnpike Authority has uh, expressed interest in having some time with you to talk about their widening project. Uh, Chris mentioned it. Uh, it's going to be pretty impactful to the whole region, and so they're making rounds to all affected communities. Uh, so I'll work with the chairman to find time in our busy agenda in the next couple of weeks and months to make that happen. Uh, Manager? Yes. Um, through the chair, sorry. Yes. Um, uh, Will the turnpike also be prepared to discuss the bypass? <coughs> What's By going on with the bypass? The Gorham East West yes. Road? If you could add. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not aware that there's any tremendous movement, but I didn't get a yeah. status report. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Council member comments. Let's start down with Councilor Bebe. Uh Thank you. I have nothing tonight. Um, so the only thing I have is that the uh, Scarborough Historic Society is uh, raising money through a raffle. Um, they actually have two raffles. Um, I think tickets are $10 each. One is for a, an antique bamboo uh, fishing rod. I don't recall what the other item is, but um, stop by if you're interested in raffle tickets. Um, they're located behind uh, the Dunstan Fire Station, or I'm happy to uh, facilitate. Thank you. What's the vote? Uh, I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilor Caterina? Nothing. Thank you. Councilor Hayes? Yeah, just, just quick one. I just think, you know, I'm a little concerned about where we find ourselves as a community. I just hope we can find a way to come together and heal and move forward. Um, sometimes there's silver linings and everything, so I hope, I hope leaders will come together to figure out how do we move through where we are to get to a, a better place. Uh, I'll keep mine. Concise. I, I'm feeling a lot of pressure to say no comment, but I gotta say just three things real quick. Um, I just want to be very clear with um, those That's people. More than in the, three things. <laughs> uh, with people in the audience, I, 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 no disrespect was meant at all by by the comments earlier. And in fact, imitation is the best form of flattery. So I just want to be clear about that. That that was not meant to be disrespectful. I, I hope it wasn't taken that way. Um, I wanted to comment a little bit on the, the comment about Dan Bacon. Mm -hmm. um, while I, I agree with the chairman, Dan Bacon is a, a fantastic person. Let's not, RJ Chase is no slouch either, and he's on our team representing mm -hmm. the town. So let's not forget that. Um, and everybody's roles are very clear, and I think they understand that. Um, uh, the schools, again, I just wanted to remind, I have to, I, 
I have to reiterate this every single time. I, I, it's impossible to be unaware of what's going on in this town, but it is imperative that we as a council do not interject ourselves in that process because it's not our role or responsibility. If we're asked, that's another story. But um, I, can, I can appreciate the, the, the challenges that we're facing as a town. And it's very, very difficult to sit here on our hands and not say or do anything. But that's really our job is to just stay out, in my opinion. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, town manager and I have been meeting with the Scarborough Downs people uh, every two weeks. Uh, uh, and they're... It's, it's interesting. We work mostly on priorities and process. It really is an effort to try and have this 500-acre boat ship move in the right direction to get the things going forward that need to get going forward. It's a, when you're taking a landmass that large and trying to build a mini community, uh, and it, uh, it is quite a task. And so uh, uh, the planning board will, in the weeks ahead, uh, begin to have kind of regular appearances, I think, by uh, the people from the Scarborough Downs Project. They're uh, uh, actively trying to pursue uh, their first element of construction, which is uh, in the uh, uh, area nearest to the Route 1 entrance to Scarborough Downs, a mixed-use area. Uh, and the planning department will have a lot of information on that. I think people will find it very interesting. Uh, it's going to be uh, critically important to the future of our community, and so uh, I, I look forward to that. Uh, uh, I'm glad to hear about the uh, library. I think the library is one of the most important institutions in any community, uh, and your support for that uh, 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 we all appreciate. Uh, uh, I think every one of us thinks about the, with consternation, the school debate that has been going on. Uh, I share Councillor Caezo's thoughts about the reluctance to insert ourselves, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, it, it obviously involves a lot of people with a lot of goodwill and uh, for whom the community hopes that they can find ways to resolve these issues and come together. So with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Thank you. That would make me win or chicken dinner. <laughs> what should we do with these? Just a little bit off, huh, Tony? Just a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.